my feelings in the name of love or play it safe for a while that was easy and if living for myself is what I'm guilty of go on and sentence me we're doing this workshop and all of a sudden limos start to pull up to the productions. People are packing in this tiny, tiny theater and then you're going, wow, okay, what's going on? And then the next thing you know, it's like the big hit. It's being moved to the Orpheum Theater. They renovate the Orpheum Theater for the show. It just spiraled from the, the little show that could. And it was wonderful because um, Howard was directing it. Also, usually, sometimes when you're working with the, um, the writers of a show, <clears throat> and they are also directing it, sometimes they're like too close to the project and they can't see where, um, they, couldn't, they can't see the flaws. But Howard was so great. He knew exactly what he wanted. He knew exactly what was going to work. And, and he would say to us, which I think is uh, a lot of the problems of the other productions of Little Shop that I've seen, where they try to make the three girls into like just chorus girls and they're off to the whatever, and I think they did in the movie too. It's just like, you know, they just come in and out. The thing is, the question is, they're telling the story. What do they know? And when we did it, there was always one of us on stage. We were always a part of the whole thing, and you're like, Throughout the whole show, you're still wondering, who are they? What are they? Are they part of this alien world? Are they whatever? And, it, and it's not a cartoon. And people play it as a cartoon now. <gasps> I'll let the, if you play it real, then the comedy works. Yeah, they, I mean, that's what happens with musicals. You know, you go from the beginning and then when it gets that that jump to Hollywood a lot of the times they don't um, hmm how can I be diplomatic <laughs> they go thank you that's the way they said they go in a different direction um, but uh, I they did have me audition and I got a beautiful letter from Frank Oz right when they started shooting and he was over in England, you know, and the whole whatever, and he sent me this amazing letter, which I still have on my wall, saying, you know, he'll never forget my audition for Little Shop, so. It's my turn. Yeah. It's my turn. And there ain't no use in holding on, cause It was the story of Huckleberry Finn, for those who don't know Big River. But there was such, I use the word respect and honor for each individual character of the story. They weren't cartoons, they weren't, um, it's a very serious story and Mark Twain was trying to, um, <clears throat> in his own subtle way, teach people about racism. And, um, and it held up for now. It was, it, was, it was a great production. I remember I saw the end of every production, every show, because I stood back in the wings and I watched Ron, the great Ron Richardson, unfortunately passed away, but the great Ron Richardson walk up that, um, when, he, when he, he was singing and he went off and then you had Daniel Jenkins at the end going on up as Huck, just never forget it. It was great, it was a great show. Costumes were beautiful. Um, and I, I have to give Des Mackinoff his props because he had such, um, I'm trying to think what the word is, um, sensitivity to all members of the cast. 
uh, black and white because you had cast members who had to act, be slave owners and us be, having to be slaves. And, and so he did like a, a week before um, at the beginning of rehearsals where we sat and we, we, we discussed all about racism and, and slavery and all this. So you knew where, other, where people were coming from. There's not that much work for, for um, black performers. We're all different. We're all um, special in our own way. Not all of us sing. Just because you're black doesn't mean you can sing. <laughs> but but um, there's, there's not that much work. I mean, and what work there is, everybody's fighting for those one a few parts. I'll go to auditions and they're like, you know, 20, 25 of the most fantastic performers here. And you go, why isn't there enough work for these people? Why can't um, be seen? Well, Roger Miller came up to me one day and he said, uh, I've written you a song. And I was like, <laughs> I'm like, as it was, I was a little um, awestruck with Roger, you know, I, I grew up in, in Texas and in Dallas and my mother, you know, loved Ro Roger Miller. I remember in one of the auditions, I told him my mother loved him. And um, to have him say, I've written you a song and then gave it to me and I worked with it um, with Linda Twine um, on um, how I was going to sing it, my arrangement. And um, I was singing it and everything and, he's, and he just looked at me, he said, sing it the way you sing it. Come on, you know, great songwriter, performer. It was good. Very nice, very nice. <laughs> I'm gonna be standing on the corner, 12th Street and Vine, with my Kansas City baby and a bottle of Kansas City wine. Well, I might take a plane, I might take a train. You are shot out of the cannon. It's, um, it helped me that years ago I used to I did um, Sacramento music when you only had one week of rehearsals at Sacramento music, and um, I worked a couple of times for Glenn Cassell out there, and and he, he's it's really it was really a good training because it teaches you how to get prepared, get ready. You know, for me when I do a reprise show, I try to come in uh, that first day of rehearsals already knowing as much music as I can because um, you don't have that much time to really settle in. Um, but it's, it's a good experience, you know, it's, you get to perform. And for me, um, um, he's not the cast director anymore, but someone like Bruce Newberg who did do um, um, how do you call it, uh, non-traditional casting, who, you know, put me in it's Cleo and, and um, Most Happy Fellow and um, Hair, Sheila, I mean, who could see that that could work. It was great. Would you like to ride in my beautiful balloon? Uh, up, up and away in my beautiful, oh, and what's the other one? Um, uh, uh, Aquarius, Aquarius. I mean, there's so many. Last night I didn't get to sleep at all. There's, I'll just sit here and I'll do a medley of their song. You go, oh, that's the fifth dimension. No, it's uh, um, uh, Florence LaRue offered me, you know, the chance to sing with the fifth dimension. We'll see what happens, you know, because it's like a three month probationary period or whatever to see if I like doing that kind of thing. And if they like me being a part of it. But I, Look, I'll try anything. My aim is to sing. I'm a singer, and I love it. Um, it's in my heart, and any kind of singing that I can do, I'll try it. In one night, you can see so many different fabulous performers, and, and, and it's very um, classy, and, um, and it's done with respect because uh, they don't let you look bad. <laughs> they make sure you have a great sound system and you have great uh, lighting. And there's just this warm feeling in the house that everybody's there just to have a really good time and to say, yeah, we got all of this great talent that's here in Los Angeles. Because a lot of people who come, like myself, who come from New York and now live in Los Angeles and you're trying to find work. You know, so, so when you don't have work, at least you can come out and be able to just create. I am not 
Adi.